I thought I'd show you how easy it is to build a tiny black pro. Now the beautiful black, not black broads, have been made by Maker Fabs over in China. They do a fantastic job. They look amazing. So first thing you need to do, take the front plate, fill it with some buttons, the D-pad, got your start and select buttons. And the only one that's critical is this action button. You can see there's A, Y, X and B on there. Just need to make sure that goes the right way around. Otherwise it'll look funny. So drop your board in. Pop some screws in the corners. And screw on these spaces. Don't need to be tight at this point. We can tighten it all up later. The shot of my hand there. <laughs> Making this look difficult, but it's really not. Cool. So that's all assembled. You can check all your buttons work. The final version won't be quite so clicky, but it's handy for the video. So, we need to turn our attention to this. This is a bit of a bumper between the front and the back. It's got a nice array of holes there for the pogo pins, just so you can't go wrong. First thing you need to do is fill in this cap here with a speaker. Just need to make sure we don't drop it, and that these spring, spring contacts here on the speaker, they need to be facing upwards. But the speaker can go in either way. I've designed the board so that it doesn't matter which way around you put the speaker. As long as these gold contacts are facing up, you're laughing. So we just need, before we add the bumper, we need to add these shoulder buttons. Now, because the case is printed in nylon, these got a nice bit of flex. And these just need to pop up on here to activate these shoulder buttons. Now, there is a little peg just on the edge there. That stops things rotating. So you put it peg first onto the threaded spacer. Push it all the way down. Then go to the other side. Same again, peg first onto the spacer, push him down there. Now we can add the bumper, and it's pretty obvious which way it goes. Can't go that way, can't go that way, it's got to go that way. <laughs> push that onto the, rod, the threaded rods, everything all lines up nicely. You can check these buttons work. All good and good. So now is the fun job of popping a pogo pin in each one of these holes. Can't really get this wrong. Just need to make sure one end is springy, one end is not. So you just need to make sure you put springy end first into the hole. And do that 30 times. A little bit fiddly, but far, far easier than soldering. And these are custom made, so you won't be able to go down to a shelf and buy them. So be super, super careful. Don't want to go losing any. I do have a habit of rolling away. Fun part of the video, but 
his phone off on them watching his older. Almost there. Oh, there's one handy one for the battery. Don't worry then. And you can always just double check if you can push them down. I'll do it with tweezers so you can see it. If you can push those down. They're in the right way. So your next job is to plug the battery in. Now that's just down in this corner here. So you can just get that lined up. Push him in. Just be careful with the uh, metal implements touching the battery. Now if you want to double check, just tap the power button and if you see flashing lights, you're good to go. Make sure the battery sits nice and flat, flat, flat. <laughs> and then your next job is to add the pie. This is super duper easy. You just need to line up those GPIO pins with the burger pins. Push them down. Make sure he sits flat. And then if we take the back cover, just line up the cutouts with the ports, push that on, and then we simply need to add screws in the back. And we can finally tighten these up. This is the only tool you really need, it's one and a half mm Allen key. Tighten the screws. Now we can tighten the front as well. So, your SD card will have hopefully been pre programmed. Now, the power button, if you give it a dab, it flashes a few times just so you can. Check your battery level just where you're going out. Hold it down and it'll stay lit. And the screen will light up. Can't actually see that because it's black currently. But that will start to boot. You can just about see through the plastic the activity LED from the from the Pi. Sometimes just about see that. So that will boot up into Retro Pi. You'll notice that LED has gone off now. Because it knows the bar is awake. It turns that off. Just wait for it to boot. And you're into Emulation Station. I've only got Game Boy Advance games at the minute. Just a test image. And it's not the best theme. I've been playing around with the image just to tailor a few things. But got myself a little bit addicted to Astro Boy. So, let's give that a go in. Once the game boots, you can check your got audio, which we appear to have here. That comes out this little speaker hole there. The hole at the top is actually the LED hole, and then these holes here are for the sound. There's also a couple of holes here to indicate whether it's charged or not charged. So if you pull the charger in, get LED for charging and then the other one will light when it's charged. I will throw in with the kit a little bit of clear 3D print filament which you can just push into these holes and just make little light pipes just to make it look a bit better. So, got your shoulder buttons left and right and then the sides are all nice and clean. So 
So there we are, tiny pie. Bit of Astro Boy. Made more difficult to play for a camera. But you got the picture. So there we are, there's your tiny pie. You can shut it down through emulation station. There we go. It's as easy as that. Thanks for watching.